Welcome to the Walton Pie. Today we are going to be talking about well-definedness and well-defined relations. Um, the examples that we are going to be using are going to be using the integers modulo n. So if you are unfamiliar with that or need a refresher, please check out my other video that should have a card popping up on screen. Um, the first example does not use the integers modulo n, but the following three examples do. Um, if these videos are helpful, please subscribe as it helps me out quite a bit. Um, and without further ado, let's get into the video. So a relation is well defined if any time we have the same input, the outputs um, must match as well. Meaning that we don't have any pairs where the first coordinate matches in two different pairs, but the second coordinate does not. Um, so, a function, so a function is what a well defined relation is if every single possible input in our domain has an element that it maps to. So with this example, let's try and figure out, is this well-defined? Um, take a second, look at it, and try and see if you can figure that out. Hopefully you were able to tell that this is going to be a well-defined uh, relation, because every element in the domain of f mapped to a unique element in the codomain of f. It doesn't matter that three of the elements in the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all mapped to the same element in our codomain, where we have the pair 1c, 2c, and 4c. All that matters is that there aren't pairs like 1, c and 1, a, where one was mapping to two different elements. So this is going to be a well-defined relation. In the integers mod n, we can get a lot of interesting relations that may or may not be well-defined. So if we let bracket a denote the equivalence classes in z mod 6, or the integers mod 6, and angle a denote the equivalence classes in the integers mod 12, and then we define our function f of bracket a to be equal to angle a, so a function from z6 to z12, we can ask ourselves, is this relation well-defined? Take a minute to try and figure out, is this going to be well-defined? Meaning that if I have two inputs that are the same in Z6, are their outputs going to be the same in Z12? Hopefully you were able to tell that this is actually not well-defined. If you weren't able to figure that out, Pause it and try and see if you can find the counterexample. One counterexample to show that this is not well defined is the fact that we have the class of 3 is equal to the class of 9 in z6. So bracket 3 equals bracket 9 in z6. But angle 3 is a different equivalence class than angle 9 in z mod 12. Because 3 is not equivalent to 9 mod 12 but 3 is equivalent to 9 mod 6. So that is why bracket 3 equals bracket 9, but angle 3 does not equal angle 9. Let's look at a similar relation, but this time it's the relation going from z12 to z6, where f of angle a equals bracket a. Take a moment to try and figure out, is this relation going to be well defined? And if not, can you find the counterexample? Hopefully that was enough time for you to figure out that this relation is well-defined. If you weren't able to figure that out, pause the video and see if you can figure out why this is well-defined. So the reason that this is well-defined is if we start with the same input, so we start with assuming that uh, angle A equals angle B, that tells us that A and B are in the same equivalence class in Z mod 12. So that tells us that a is equal to b plus 12 times some integer k. So if we then use that substitution for a, we can find that f of angle a is equal to bracket a, which is the same thing as bracket of b plus 12k. So that is us making the substitution for a. We can then use rules of addition um, with the integers modulo 12 to break that up into um, bracket b plus bracket 12k, 
And since we are in Zmod 12, bracket of 12k is the same, or the class of 12k is the same as the class of 0. So the class of b plus the class of 12k turns into the class of b plus the class of 0, which is the same thing as the class of b. So bracket b is equal to f of angle b. That tells us that f is going to be a well-defined relation. The last relation we are going to check to see if it is well-defined is this relation from z6 to z6. So we are only dealing with equivalence classes in one space. We're not going between spaces. So we, if we define f of the class of a to be the class of a squared, the question is, is this relation going to be well-defined? Take a moment to try and figure out if this is going to be a well-defined relation. Hopefully you were able to figure out that this is going to be well-defined. If you weren't able to figure that out, pause the video and try and figure this out on your own. The reason that this is going to be well-defined is as follows. Start by defining f of the class of a to be the class of a squared, and then if we start with the class of a equals the class of b in z6, then we can say that a is equal to b plus 6k, where k is some integer. Then we can figure out, well, what is a squared? a squared is going to be b plus 6k, all squared, which when we expand that out becomes b squared plus 12bk plus 36k squared, which is equal to b squared plus 6 times the quantity 2k plus 6k squared. 2k plus 6k squared is an integer, so b squared is congruent to a squared mod 6, which tells us that the class of a squared is equal to the class of b squared. That tells us that f is going to be a well-defined relation. Hopefully these videos were helpful for you and that you were able to understand relations a little bit better. Um, if you liked the video, please subscribe and uh, continue to watch some of my other videos. It helps me out quite a bit, and hopefully they help you out quite a bit as well. If there's any other videos you'd like to see me be making, please leave it in the comments section down below. And good luck with all of your math, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.